All right, how's it going guys? So 10 tips and tricks in Blender, love this series. This one's really cool because we got things that are gonna help you speed time, fix things in a crunch, make really cool effects and different graphics and animation. So this one's really, really fun. Love it, let's get into it. All right, so the first one is the Anim Anything add-on which comes with Blender by default. And here's the problem that the add-on solves. So I have this lattice here deforming the skull, but there's no obvious way to animate this movement. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down. And then in your preferences, you go ahead and enable the Anim Anything add-on. It's gonna show up right here in the end panel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my skull right down here and I'm gonna click on uh, insert keyframe, bring it over a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit G and you know deform it back up to here and then click insert keyframe again. And that is gonna animate that right there. So when different things that are not obvious are not really keyframeable by default, the Anim Anything add-on is gonna allow you to keyframe those non-keyframeable things. It's a really cool add-on. All right, so this is a really cool trick that I showed more of a dedicated tutorial, but I have all of this glass around here and I really want it to be a little bit more emissive. So right over here is the control for that glass. I can click on the base color and click on HSV and bring your value to like three. And what that's going to do is take your reflections, all the reflections, and boost how bright they are. And then what's crazy is you can change the color to whatever you want. So instead of creating an emission node, you just take the reflections you already have and boost them up. All right, so this is a strobe light that I created. And if you ever wanted to know how do you make a strobe light, let me show you one of the easiest ways to do it. So I'm going to create four keyframes. I'm going to keyframe the brightness here, bring it over here, bring it down to zero, keyframe that, and then bring it back up keyframe that, and then right over here, bring it back to zero and keyframe that. And what I'm gonna do now is hop over to the animation tab and open up the graph editor, and then hit N for the end panel, go to modifiers, add modifier, noise. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just bring that strength up to just a pretty wild degree. And if you press play, it's now just gonna glitch the heck out of your uh, keyframes. And if you don't want it to be that quick, well, you can bring your scale down and that's gonna make it a little bit smoother, a little bit more spread out when it, turns on the, when it comes to your on and off, or you can go back to the original and make it go crazy. But the noise modifier allows you to take regular, you know, your default keyframes and just add this crazy randomness to them. It's really cool. Now, I wanna take a quick second, let you guys know that today's video is brought to you by my add-on, Real-Time Materials. It's a collection of currently 290 procedural materials you can apply to anything in one click. So you have some really cool complex materials like the cloth materials that just give you a massive amount of editability. You can even change the direction of the cloth weave, which is nuts. You have 30 metallic materials. Those are the ones I use constantly in my personal projects. And some really beautiful carbon fiber materials that can change the color. You can take the clear coat off it so you have like fully exposed carbon fiber. It's super cool. And my current new addition, the really nice leather materials. Again, currently 290 materials. All updates are free. You can hit the description if you want to check it out. It helps support the channel. If you like what I do, it really helps me keep going. Uh, but with that being said, let's get back into these tips. All right, so if you've ever tried animating your depth of field in cycles, you'll know it's close to impossible to, to keyframe that animation and see if it works, see if it's good. Well, Blender has that figured out for you. If you're in flat mode, notice that I can see depth of field in the flat mode, which you may not know you can do. So if you're in flat mode, I'm calling it flat mode, um, hit this drop down here and you can click on depth of field and that's gonna allow you to, to a pretty accurate degree, see what your depth of field is gonna look like. And this is gonna allow you to actually animate your depth field. So if your depth field is moving or widening or whatever, you can get an accurate look of what it's gonna look like before you hop into cycles with all the noise and the lag and the slowness. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, it's easy to see an EV, but even then it's hard. This will give you a much less computer intensive way to preview your depth of field. All right, here's a good one about unwrapping. If you are in a pinch, and I mean, if you're in a pinch, there are always better ways to unwrap. I wanna make that clear. But if you're in a pinch and you need to just unwrap something really quickly, Blender has some default stuff for you. So if you are in edit mode, what you can do is you can hit U for unwrap and you could just click unwrap. It's gonna do that, which is pretty sick, but sometimes that won't work. So you can hit unwrap and do sphere projection. That's gonna kind of give you more of a sphere, sphere projection, which is connecting everything, looks really, really nice. Or you can do smart UV project and play with your settings here. Honestly, I always keep it at default unwrap it and that's going to give you your disconnected pieces and really kind of do some of the math for you but those are different ways to really quickly really quickly unwrap a mesh that you don't really understand especially if you're using like the default primitives like when i'm using real-time materials and i need to throw something on here i'll just hit u and then i'll do smart uv project project it on there and that'll quickly allow me to apply some of those uv materials 
very quickly, very easy. So if you're starting off with say a sphere that you know you're gonna sculpt, go ahead and just do the sphere projection. It's gonna do it perfectly. And then you can go ahead and do your stuff. But those are really good. Again, if you're in a pinch, there are much more intensive ways to do it. But this one is definitely the quickest. So I just recently had a client project where I needed to project a kind of a mosaic glass right down on the ground. And I thought, well, lights allow you to access nodes. I'm gonna try that out. So here's the light without the grass and the sunlight here. And this is what it looks like. So let me show you how you can access the nodes within your lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new area light. I'm gonna bring it up and now you can see that and you can bring your power up. Here's our area light. Hop on over to shading and click on use nodes. Now this is really only going to work in cycles, unfortunately, but what you can do now, I'm gonna hit the period key and here's our emission node. And now you can play with all of your color settings here, but this allows you, but this allows you to throw in things like Voronoi textures into your emission. And then you can say, hey, let's get a color ramp so we can really goof with this and then crunch that in. And the light settings, bring your spread down to one, and then you can bring your size up. And now we have access to a really cool node a really cool light setup that you can go ahead and play with that. Then maybe add some color here. And of course, if you switch it over to 4D, you can animate the light. So you can access nodes within your lights to really create much much more, much more interesting effects and even throw images in there, say like a face, smiley face, whatever. It's a really cool way to take your lighting to another level and even create gobos. Did you know that you can manipulate your HDRIs to create really cool effects, say in your reflections or lighting and things like that? So let me show you how you can do that. So this is a really cool Chrome text that I wanted to create, but the HDRI really wasn't doing anything for me and I couldn't find what I wanted. So I went and manipulated it. So this is my node setup right here. But of course, by default, you're just going to have this. So if I turn on the camera here, this is my HDRI, but it's not what I wanted to do. So what I did was I went ahead and accessed the nodes here, you have to go to the world settings. So if you go to the shader, typically you're just gonna have your object settings. And in my case, I just have a metallic material. But right up here, you can go from object to world and access the HDRI, which you then can say, throw a color ramp on there and crunch it down to just kind of your essential lights. And then say, hey, let's change the color here, make them blue. Now you can see that. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the camera here. So now we can just focus on reflections. Then what I did was I threw a mapping node in there and then I threw in a white noise node. Then I threw in a, then I threw a color mix node here so that I can just manipulate the softness of it. So now we have really cool chrome text. So you bring my color ramp a little bit wider here, but now I've manipulated the chrome text. And if I bring the camera back, you can see the white noise node blurred all of my stuff so I can get beautiful chrome turn it off the camera, and now we have manipulated HDRI to what I wanted it to look like to get a really cool effect. So you can take regular lights and make them look really, really cool. All right, so if you are in a unique situation that I find myself pretty often in where I want to get all of these rigid bodies together, but I don't want to have to re-simulate and re-simulate every time I wanna check the composition. So as you can see, we're at frame one and all of my rigid bodies are already together. They've already been simulated, but I didn't want it to apply the mesh and then they're all stuck together and joined together. So let me show you how you can create your simulations and then set them so that now you can have them individually still, but together at the beginning of the frame. I hope that made sense. So I'm gonna start with a simple object and turn on a rigid body. And then I'm just gonna duplicate a couple and get a force field. Then I'm gonna bring my force field strength in. And if I press play, now they're here. But again, if I want to start the scene with all the rigid bodies already together, how do I do that? Well, just highlight them, hit F3 and type in apply transform. And it's gonna say rigid body apply transformation. It's gonna apply that. So now when we start at the beginning of our scene, they're set, but they're still simulating. So then we can go ahead and throw say another and another and another. And then we start at the beginning of the scene and now they're gonna come in. So you can have a lot more control of your rigid bodies by applying transforms, starting over and creating the piece of art that you really want to and have more control. I wouldn't describe this as a better way to array, but it's definitely a more customizable way to create an array. So I have this thing right here that I created in geometry nodes with, an, with what I would say a custom array and it's called a mesh line. So this is the mesh line node right here and I can actually I can, actually, I can actually manipulate things right here and make this really cool array that I can then animate in a really cool way. So let me show you how that works. 
So I'm gonna get a plane, hop over to geometry nodes, click new, and I'm gonna delete that and get a mesh line. So we have our mesh line node and currently this line we're seeing has 10 points. So I'm gonna get a instance on points node. And then let's just throw in a torus into this scene just for the heck of it. And then I'm gonna drag that in here and plug that into the instance spot. So now we have 10 of these guys right here. And then you can go ahead and bring them closer together. But the reason why this is a much more powerful way to array it has its limitations, but it's really fun. What you can do is here, here you have this scale slot. So we can go ahead, throw a color ramp on the scale and a gradient node. Switch that gradient here to spherical, plug the color there. And now you can see we have this gradient here, but here's why that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put this black one here, bring the white one here in the middle and get in another black color here. Then what I can do is just kind of bring the Z in to create more here. We can bring down that color just to kind of bring it. And then now we have this really cool looking piece. Now bring up the count, bring the Z in, and then you can animate the, then you can animate the Z and bring in this really interesting scene through a very unique way to array objects. All right, so this is a scene I made a tutorial for a while back, but while I was modeling this object, I hit a problem where I couldn't bevel the edges. This is, this is currently the wireframe and it looks stable enough, but to get these edges here to bevel the way I wanted to, I could not figure out how to do it in terms of manipulating the geometry. But thank goodness we have a bevel node in our shading. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit M to mute it. I'm gonna hit the render view. And this is how sharp and ugly the edges. You don't really want these crazy sharp edges. So what, I, what you can do is add in a bevel node and now you can see the light is nicely reflecting off. See that? So I'm gonna go ahead and mute it again. No light reflection, no right light reflection. It's just kind of an ugly edge. If we bring it, if we bring it back in, now we have light reflecting on these edges the way we want for a nice bevel. When you zoom out, it really creates this nice illusion of just a nice bevel. My sample's here at nine, my radius is at 0 0.02. Just plug it right into the normal of your regular principled node, just a very simple material here. And it will give you a really nice piece and it only works in cycles, but it's very, very good in a pinch where you just can't figure out how to bevel and you don't wanna go back and remodel the entire thing. And there you go. Those are my 10 tips and tricks. Uh, if you want me to continue doing this series, let me know in the comments. I love doing that stuff. Uh, be sure to check out real-time materials. That'll help support the channel. And with that being said, I hope you learned some stuff and I'll see you in the next tutorial.